Good morning, everyone. From Jeff's Little Engine Service. Well, what we have here today, folks, <clears throat> is a lawnmower that will not start. Um, the owner says it was running just fine until he hit something very hard in the yard. And sure enough, when I looked at the blade, it was really bent. Um, so the first thing I did was put a new blade back on there and it still won't start as a matter of fact when you pull on the chain or when you pull on the rope it feels really uh, kind of stiff and it just doesn't feel real smooth when you pull it <clears throat> I don't know if I can show you it just doesn't seem like it wants to do anything um, I think what happened uh, when you find a blade that bent, what most likely happened was that it sheared the flywheel key. Uh, the flywheel key is what keeps these motors in time. And unfortunately, the flywheel is located underneath all of this stuff. So we're going to have to take off the engine cover and the gas tank to get to it and the flywheel to replace the key. <clears throat> it's kind of a deep job. You have to have uh, a special tool to get the flywheel off in a lot of cases. But I'm going to show you all how to do it. I suspect that's what's wrong. Let's hope I'm right. So if you ever have to change a pull rope or um, do any sort of work with the coil or flywheel or anything like that, you're going to have to be able to take off the engine cover. Now this top cover usually just comes off with a couple of screws. And then you have to take off the gas tank there's three five sixteenths bolts that hold it on you can take those off and then just rot the rotate the gas tank back enough to where you can uh, take off the four three eighths bolts that hold this engine cover on and actually there's a bolt right there too that's looks like it's attached to the muffler on this model um, then you should be able to lift the whole thing apart let's try it out careful not to drop these bolts down into there <clears throat> although you're going to be getting down into there anyways but this is pretty much the same procedure on almost all Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engines there is another bolt that holds the tank on down on the side here but usually you don't need to do anything with it you can just uh, Loosen these up all the way. For some reason that one's sticking. There you go. And then it just rotates back. Um, you do also have to take off that there on the oil dipstick. Don't want to forget to remove this. So when you take this off, I'll show you a trick basically you just lift the dipstick up about a quarter inch and then twist it out of the way see that twist it out of the way and then just push it back into place and then it's out of your way for you so now you can take off the actual engine cover mounting bolts there's two in the back two in the front One of these days I need to get some better tools. I've been using these old craftsman tools for about 20 years. They've replaced my wrenches a few times. Good tools, 
but it would be nice to have something a little better. Okay, so I just need to take off this little one here, and then that whole cover will come off. And this one isn't normally here. I think someone attached that to the muffler because it was rattling or something. Okay, so we're all loose. We should be able to... Sometimes this little tab in front can get in your way, but you just have to... You can work it right past it. There we go. That's your flywheel. That's your coil. This is your brake, which stops the engine. When you pull the lever, see how that moves? There's a little brake pad. When you let off the lever up here at the handle, it basically puts a brake pad on this flywheel and, and stops it. All right, so to get to the flywheel key like I want to do, we're going to have to take off the flywheel. It's a good idea to, to lock the, the handle down here. So the brake isn't on the flywheel. I'm just using a bungee cord. So there's a nut down in there, and that's how you take it off. Uh, it's not a American size. Uh, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> it's a it's a 24 millimeter and if you don't have an, an impact socket just to zip that thing off there I want to show you how I do it or how I used to do it back in the old days just put it on here and you're going to want to give it a sharp tap now not too hard that you end up breaking something, but a good whack. See? Now we're loose. Good tip, huh? And when you do put it on, there's a specific torque, so you want to be cautious with that. If you over tighten it, you'll just crack it. Alright. Perfect example of what I wanted to show you all. So, <clears throat> you see on the shaft there, there's that groove, and that's where the flywheel key is supposed to be setting, but you can see where the flywheel key is on this one. It's been broken, sheared, so it's off to the side. <clears throat> Just want to make sure that y'all can see that so you know how to identify it yourself so you find the cutaway in the shaft where the key is supposed to go but as you can see the key is not in the shaft anymore so I'm going to show you all how to use a what we call a knockoff tool to knock off that flywheel So these are what are called knockoff tools. Um, we'll only be using one, whatever size that is. I think it's the yeah, it's the bigger one. <clears throat> so we'll be using this one. And all you do is you thread it on all the way down, and then you unthread it about a full turn. And the idea is, is you're going to have to get some sort of a pry bar. <clears throat> I'm just going to use this because that's the closest thing around. And you want to get under the flywheel and just kind of pry up on it a little bit. And then you whack down on the knockoff tool. It's kind of fun. But you want to be careful uh, when you're prying on wherever your pry point is on the engine that you're not going to damage something. So I'm going to find a spot, and you don't have to pry that hard. 
I think I'm going to go right into there like that and then give it a good whack. Nothing happens, so I'm going to rotate it, try to find a better pry point here. Yeah, I think that's a good one right in there. I have a pry bar that I normally use for this, but I can't seem to find it. Okay, so I'm prying up. There we go. And once again, you want to make sure the brake is off here. Ha ha! And that's what you call a boogered up flywheel key. So we'll want to clean this all off so our new key fits perfect. So you can see that's this is what a normal key, Briggs and Stratton key looks like for this engine, and that's the damaged one. So basically we're just going to put this in place, however you want to do it, in the flywheel or in the shaft, and then we're going to put things back together. Normally, what I do is I sand all this down for a nice smooth surface for when we put the flywheel back on. Oh! Lost the key. See if we can stick it back down in there. Right. And these don't really go on any particular way that I know of. So when you're tightening this down, you want to be careful because you're going to have to hold the flywheel. A lot of times people will break off the fins on the flywheel because they'll stick something inside here to try and jam it from moving when you're tightening it down. I'll show you the best way to do that. So the torque specification is 55 foot-pounds to 75 foot-pounds depending on which model you have. This one is 55 so I'm gonna do it at oh, 55 to 60. Now the way to hold the flywheel in place is basically you just want to stick a piece of wood um, underneath where the blade is to, um, to lock the blade in place. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to find a spot to, let's see, I'm going to be turning it this way. so. Probably jam it right in there. Yeah. And now the flywheel should be locked in place. I have my torque wrench. Almost there. Oop, my log coming loose down there. There we go. We are there. See that wasn't so bad. Alright, <clears throat> let's put it back together. Same way we took it apart. Alright. 
and after you bolt this on uh, do not forget to bolt the oil spout back on because a lot of times I forget to do that and I put the gas tank on and realize I forgot to tighten up that so let's go ahead and get this all mounted up I really need to start wearing gloves again my hands are getting all dirty Not that I mind getting dirty, but you don't have to. A lot of times I'll just pull on that as I'm cinching it down, just to make sure that it's centered correctly. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but it's something I do. Not too tight because you can strip them out. It's just aluminum. <sighs> All right. Now, as I was saying, you don't want to forget to secure the oil dipstick down. pushed into place. Tighten it up. Once again, not not too tight. Alright, so these gas tank bolts back on. Not too tight, you can strip them out pretty easy. All right. Okay, might as well put the cover back on, I'm pretty sure we found the problem. Okay, and I was working on the transmission on this model too. That's where that came from. I'm going to turn it around so all the smoke does not blow into my garage. Alright, let's test this bolt. One, two, three, four, five. Keep your fingers crossed, folks. Well, that's an improvement. It's been out in the rain all night. There might be some water in there.
in my legs and in my 